Well, happy Monday, everybody. Pastor Steve here. Thank you for joining me for today's devotion. We are in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Hope you've already read the chapter, written in your journal, what God said to you. And while you're opening the Bible to Deuteronomy 7, I want to remind you that Vacation Bible School started here at First Baptist last night. And if your children or grandchildren were not here, it's not too late. You can bring them tonight. So that's tonight, Vacation Bible School here at First Baptist. More information, you can find it on our website. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 7. In reading this chapter, I thought about uh, our country today. You know, we, we live in a, in a secular, pluralistic culture, nation, and at times, the morals and values of this culture, this nation, are at odds with what God says is right and wrong. And the reason I thought about that is because in chapter 7, I think God gives us some insights that can help us as his people know how to live in a secular, pluralistic culture or nation. Moses, in this chapter, is talking to the Hebrew people about some of the things they are going to encounter, some of the challenges and struggles and temptations and hardships they will struggle as they conquer the promised land and the nations who are already living there are, are driven out as they have to fight those nations. And he says something interesting about that process in verses 22 and 23 of chapter 7. Look at it with me. The Lord your God will clear away these nations before you, the nations that were already in the promised land they're getting ready to enter and conquer. Notice, God will clear away these nations before you little by little. Notice that, little by little. You will not be able to put an end to them quickly. For the wild beasts would grow too numerous for you. In other words, uh, some of the wild animals <clears throat> would multiply too quickly because there'd be fewer people to uh, keep the numbers down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 23, but the Lord your God will deliver them before you. God will deliver these nations into your hands and will throw them into great confusion. The nations, when, when it's time for you to battle them, he will throw them into great confusion until they are destroyed. Now, I find those, those verses interesting because he says to, to, to the people, um, it's not going to be a quick process. God will do it. He will do it in time, little by little, but it won't happen quickly. It's a process, and it will take some time. Now, uh, I think there's reasons for this. One is God always sees more than we do. And he knew that if it happened too quickly, other issues, there'd be unintended consequences. So God, God sees things down the road, and sometimes he doesn't move as fast as, as we would like him to. There's a reason. Now, he says, if you'll be patient and trust me and obey me, that God says, I'm going to throw them into confusion. And they will be destroyed. And it's interesting, in the Old Testament, there are multiple examples of when Israel was being attacked by another army, and God caused that army to fall into confusion and start killing themselves or run away. God would do different things to create confusion. That actually happened in Israel's history. You can read about it in multiple places in the Old Testament. One of the things I wrote in my journal is that sin never stops. Okay, it keeps wanting more until it destroys and creates confusion. In other words, I was trying to apply this to our culture. And one of the takeaways for me is just that, as God said, hey, I'm not going to do all of this quickly. It's going to take time. And through that process, um, I'm going to throw those enemy armies into confusion. What I have observed, I've lived long enough to see this, is that over time, sin shows itself for what it really is. Evil shows itself for what it really is. And because sin and evil want more and more and more and are never satisfied, eventually they go to an extreme and they destroy not only others, it's themselves, itself, and creates confusion. And, and uh, I think about the gay rights movement. It's, and and, and it's, it's to observe in recent days the focus on uh, gender identity and uh, transitioning of teenagers. And while that is vocal and loud, you're starting to see 
sin and evil going to such an extreme that ordinary people are saying, wait a minute, put the brakes on. This is going too far. Not just Christians, not just people in the church, but you have female athletes who are saying, wait a minute, you mean I have to compete against a man who thinks he's a woman? That's not fair. Sin always wants to go too far, and eventually it destroys itself. Now, it destroys a lot of people in the process. It's just interesting to me that... Uh, that 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 sometimes it, it it works that way. Abortion. Now I'm recording this devotion the Monday after Mother's Day, so we don't know what the Supreme Court's ruling is going to be today. There was the leaked document. When you're watching this video, the court probably has already released its its, its decision. So you know more than I do right now. But what I do know is that we know so much more about the baby in the womb today than was known 50 years ago when the court. Uh, ruled in, in, in Roe, Roe v. Wade. Um, and it's interesting that over time, as people have learned more and sin has pushed further, people, people who are not religious realize that, uh, that's, you know, secular people realize, you know, that's not just a fetus because we know more. We know more. You see, I, just as God, through the armies opposing, and this may be a stretch, but here, uh, stay with me. Just as God, through the armies that were that Israel would face into confusion, I, I have a conviction biblically and through life experience that sin will always go to an extreme, and once it does, it creates the kind of confusion that in some ways defeats it. Most Americans today, this would not have been true years ago, most Americans today believe there should be some limits on Abortion. Now, the majority still believe abortion should be legal in certain circumstances. But most Americans know enough now to say it should not be unlimited. There should be some real restrictions and limits on abortion, not abortion whenever, for whatever reason. Uh, and this, this chapter, and again, I recognize it may be a stretch, but the idea of God working little by little and it won't happen quickly, but the confusion. Um, it just reminded me that sometimes God has this way of seeing the long long haul, the big picture uh, down the road, and he realizes that sin is going to push too far. And when it does, it kind of defeats itself to an extent. Um, in this chapter, the guidance for the Jewish people and for us is he told them, not to intermarry with people of the land because if they did, it would turn their hearts away from the Lord that they need to fully follow God. And you and I need to be careful that we don't allow the culture to shape how we think and feel. Um, he told them in this chapter, destroy the pagan altars, the altars of these false religions, these false idols. Um, and today... We have to resist the idea that, that is popular in certain circles that all religions are the same. No. I mean, you, you can worship a different religion, different idol if you choose, but, but we're not going to say, we're not going to agree with the statement, all religions are the same because they are not. That is an intellectual lie. What he tells us in this chapter is to obey God completely. And for you... And me, that's good advice. As we live in this secular world and sin pushes and often pushes too far and creates confusion and, and so on, is, is, is remain fully devoted to God. Be willing to be different. Um, don't compromise our faith um, by saying all religions are the same. Sell out, sell out to the Lord Jesus Christ and be willing to be different. And don't compromise your witness. You see, when we, we become like the culture, we don't have much of a witness. So don't look like the culture. Be different. May have rambled a little bit today, I don't know. But those are some of my pondering thoughts. I'll see you tomorrow.